One year ago, I left an industry I'd been working in for over 15 years to try and become a pro photographer. Here's how it's going. My name is Chris Tejas. I am a professional photographer and videographer based in Baden, Ontario, which is a small town outside of Kitchener-Waterloo, Ontario, which is a bigger town outside of Toronto, which is big. You know Toronto. Everybody knows Toronto. So up until last year, I worked in the coffee industry. I had a couple of cafes. I worked for a roastery. I did wholesale. I, I, I did most of the things you can do in the coffee industry, realistically. And I left it because I was just feeling kind of burnt out and unhappy. I had a pretty catastrophic ending, actually, um, which I won't get into here. But what I did know for sure was that I wanted to turn my passion and hobby of photography into a career if I could. And it's been one year since I kind of made that decision. So it's been a year. And, um, you know, business is booming. I'm constantly busy. I have more people, you know, banging at my door trying to get me to take photos than I know what to do with. It's just, it's crazy. And so I want, no, of course not. It's been a year and it's been super tough and difficult and confusing. And um, some things have gone really well and some things haven't. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk to you about the things that have gone super well for me and the things that have not gone well and where things are at after one year what I think is realistic for myself in the next year and what this whole channel is gonna be about. So breaking down the things that I've learned in the last year, starting with number one, uh, gear is gonna fuck you up. When you're barely booking gigs, you've got way too much time to be looking at gear reviews and trying to learn things about gear and imagining the perfect gear for your setup so that you can book the clients you wanna book, make the decisions that you wanna make for your business and, and, and it, it can feel empowering because you don't have the clients yet, but you think, okay, if I, if I get this stuff, that's going to be it. That's going to help. The idea of wanting to book more clients or different types of clients and buying the gear in order to allow me to do that was kind of putting the cart before the horse. Okay. So the second thing that I've learned in this past year is that unless you are very, very lucky, this will not be a full-time thing. My biggest shoot this year was $3,000 and that was way more than the rest of them. Most of my shoots were somewhere in that, uh, you know, 200, 300, 400, $500 range. I would say the 3K was an anomaly and anywhere 10 to 20% of that is what most of my shoots would end up being. I say this as somebody who's in my thirties. I have a partner who has a six year old. We have a real life that we have to deal with. We've got, you know, we've got a, an apartment to rent. We've got cars. We have subscriptions we have we have a life that romantic idea of being like a starving artist is just not real for me uh, if i was 20 my advice to people based on what i've learned this past year would be completely different i'd be like you know do whatever you want go get a job at some coffee shop a couple days a week eat ramen every night for dinner and get through it and just take lots of photos and maybe that's the right advice for me too i don't know but what i can say for sure is that i want to be able to afford my life and I have to be responsible in a way that I didn't have to be responsible, you know, 15 years ago. So one of my jobs is working at a running store. I work there a couple days a week. I love running. And so it's really nice because I get to talk about something I'm excited about, but I also get to do all the photo and video work for the shop. So that means that I'm getting to work with brands, you know, some of the brands like Asics and Ultra and Saucony and all of these really cool running brands I'm getting to do social stuff for. So it's moving me towards my goal. From the get-go, I knew that I need to start making connections if I wanted to actually build my portfolio. And that is something that I have waffled on a bunch of times because it's really easy to feel like you're not worthwhile, like you have nothing to offer. But I would guarantee you that that's not true because if you're willing to listen, you're willing to work hard, you're willing to pick up and move sandbags all day, you can be helpful on a set. You have to be willing to show that you're going to work for it. You have to be willing to be the person that will show up right away and do the thing and all of that. So I knew I needed to make connections and I started reaching out to people that I knew or friends of friends or people that I respected and admired in my industry in the area. There's a bunch of different ways you could reach out. The easiest thing is obviously just to jump on Instagram or something like that and shoot them a message. Just be really clear about what you're trying to do and try not to take too much of their time because these are busy people. Unlike me, they were full-time photographers and they had lots of stuff to do and they were busy. And I knew that if I was gonna reach out, I had to make it concise and clear and just ask for what I wanted and do it in a respectful way. I'm gonna do a whole video on how to reach out to people to ask for mentorship. But the the basic idea is I would, I would 
hit them with the DM and it would say something really simple. It would say like, hey, my name's Chris. I'm a relatively new photographer. I love your stuff. I live in your area and it would be really cool if I could work with you someday. If you ever need somebody to just make some, some BTS for you or you want somebody to move around sandbags or just grab you lunch while you're busy on a shoot, I'd love to help. I said nothing really about taking photos. I said nothing about asking to get paid. All I did was say, I wanna help. If there's anything I can do, please let me know. And the key thing is just make sure you're adding value. The worst thing you can do is just not, not give anything back, right? You can't just be taking, you have, to, you have to be giving back. And that's something I always think about. Okay, number four, you need to have some kind of creative project because if you're just sitting there waiting for clients to find you, you are not going to be improving on your skill set. You're not going to be excited. And likely, if you're new into the photography space, you got into it because you're passionate about photography. I've been chipping away at one over this past year, highlighting rural Ontario and the small farming communities. Basically, what I do is I go out and I listen to Taylor Swift and I take photos. It's pretty simple, but it is really fun and it is keeping me excited and it's helping me build a portfolio on the personal side that I'm really proud of. The last thing is to not wait until the time feels right. This is a fun title to say one year as a pro photographer, but it hasn't actually been a year. It's been a little bit less than a year. I knew that if I just waited for the time to feel right, or if that like calendar mark of like, it's been one real year, I, I probably wouldn't make YouTube videos. I just, I don't know. They're not, this is weird. This is a weird thing to do. But I knew that if I kept holding off and kept holding off, I'd never do it, right? And so I think that's important in everything. Don't wait until it feels right. Don't wait till you think you're good enough. Do the thing and that's gonna make you better. Mood follows action. So just get out there and do it. Quick little ritual quote for y'all before we leave. What's the plan for YouTube? I'm gonna try and upload twice a week, every Tuesday and Friday. I have 40 videos planned. I hope that's enough to get people interested and I hope you wanna follow along. So, um, you can find everything down below in terms of my socials and all that stuff. And uh, if you want to follow along, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Hope I hear from you. All right. Peace.